had journeyed by horseback for miles and miles and miles. Even now, in my old age, my memory of that night is as crystal clear as the sky I'd been traveling under. Or maybe it was raining, but I had definitely traveled far. I'd been searching for a man who was a thousand years old, perhaps even older. He was a pickpocket, a lockpick, a liar and a thief. I'd been warned that if you threw a rock in downtown Thomas, you'd hit a dozen such men. But the man I'd come looking for had a story to tell. Sources told me he was a man who lived up to his name. My nose told me I had come to the right place. Sewer breath. Mr. Travis, sewer breath. Name doesn't ring any bells. Does this? possessed the reflexes of a cornered weasel and the odor of a dead one. Oh, how I struggled to conceal my excitement. Before me sat the last of the ancient demon battlers. <coughs> Demon's Gate, Volume 1, Research. Interview with the last surviving member of the infamous band of mercenaries led by Lord Gustavus. Over to you, Mr. Sewerbreath. He was a stubborn old clam, but I was a Juruli Point scholar. And I'd been well trained in the subtle art of negotiation. The trick, you know, is never to show any signs of eagerness. Well, you were with Lord Gustavus. You, you were a mercenary. You saved your homeland. From the besieging hordes of demons. That's it. That's it. That's the story. Yes. Yes, yes. My throat's a bit bad. Wench, fetch me a lager and a black dog pie. Jed, you're up. <laughs> Hours passed. But I'd lost track of the time. I was deeply engrossed in the ramblings of my festering friend. Yes, the elusive pieces to the puzzle of Demon's Gate were falling into place. It was a legend of epic proportions. But that's not a nice thing to do. A journey fraught with every conceivable obstacle. And down in the mine with the ghosts of very large eager men. <laughs> Scary, eh? <laughs> when? More fear not. So Gustavus took care of Henri the Fat. Good riddance. <laughs> The man was a pig. At times, I found myself moved to tears. 
depending, of course, on the direction of the breeze and the proximity of Mr. Sewerbreath's face. But I welcomed the heinousness of my friend's halitosis. I smelt the possibility of a massive bestseller. A soul is a strange thing and cannot be held anywhere until it reaches its final resting place. Once the sword was forged, the he was giving me the secrets of Caradrith's sword. It was the scoop of the millennium. Suddenly, to my horror, the recorder gave out. And just as my odorous companion was starting to roll, I was secretly thankful I'd suffered that extra term of shorthand at Jeruni Point. Thanks to higher education, I was instantly able to grasp the complexities of the story, like the secret power of elementals and the relationship to the ancient teleportation system. Why, you stupid bastard! Fire and water are sworn enemies! But fire is the king of the elements! <laughs> and darkness. Nobody likes darkness. <laughs> so, we're coming to the end of all the records. As the first light of dawn crept in through the window, I feverishly transcribed my final notes. Somewhere outside, a rooster crowed. At last, my task was done. It felt as though, through the words of my smelly compatriot, that I too had travelled every mile of that fated mission, through inhospitable landscapes, across the separate plains of reality, I was there. And in the end, it was I, Randolph Ninefingers, who befell the evil Alcat. Yes, I, the naked warrior, had made it through the Demon's Gate. My exhausted body shuddered with the chill of victory, while my feet were ablaze with a pain that seemed real. 